Hey guys, it's Jack. Welcome back to the arcade. Let's get back to just another game, Sly 2 Band of Thieves. And last time we completed the absolute worst mission in the entire game, along with me screaming and moaning about how much I hated it and how dumb it is. But now that we've finished it, I'm ready to move on and actually start enjoying the game again. But that means we have to get five more clue bottles. Now I have scouted these out. So we're not going to be wandering around. There's one. There's two. And this one's actually kind of funny. You can see it vibrating on nothing until you get close enough to see the actual post that it's sitting on. Good draw distance. Good QA, Sanzaro. And I feel like I've kind of taken a more sour view towards Sanzaro's remake than I was expecting. To be perfectly honest, I feel like, especially since I've come from a QA background early in my career, a lot of this was perfectly avoidable and fixable. A lot of this is just kind of dumb little things. Just dumb little things that bug the absolute crap out of me. It's not really taking too much away from my overall enjoyment of the game. But it definitely is... Oh, I couldn't make it up there. It is definitely a knock against the quality. If I had my choice and I, and I could get it to work, um, I would definitely be playing the original Sly 2 over this remake. And the problem is, I think a lot of the problems that I'm noticing actually continue on with Sly 3 as well. So, you know, there's that. I don't even know how Sly 1 is. Oops. Uh, which button is it? That one. Okay. No, I kind of shudder to think about it. Alright. Um, let's see. One, two... There it is. I knew I should have been up to 19 at this point. Glad I did not get too far away. There we go. But yeah, um, it's really a shame because I actually like Sinzaro's work with the Spyro remake and Thieves in Time. Oh, it's really disappointing to see that their attention to detail, which honestly they're really good about, is suffering during this re during this uh, remaster. I don't know. Maybe they couldn't get some assets at the resolution they needed, but it's still kind of silly. Anyways, that's five more clue bottles, and I have actually scouted out the next five as well. But I do want to get back to Bentley's mission before we go too far. Even though, technically, it probably would be faster just to accomplish, or just to gather the next five clue bottles before we went on to the next mission, I still really do like this formula. I, th I still think this is the best way to make clue bottle hunting work. And the good news is, if I've scouted the next five clue bottles correctly, we should be back on track with all of the clue bottles that I should have collected. Because I'm pretty sure that I found the one that I had I had to substitute last time. So if that's the case, on my map I will know which five clue bottles to go for last. But that won't be till next episode. And for this episode we're gonna play Bentley and this is actually kind of an interesting Bentley mechanic. He said, in all quotes, interesting Bentley mechanic. It's going to be about as interesting as it can be, because Bentley's actually got to be pretty tactical with this. And I'm actually kind of failing at actually getting to the mission because monkeys. I have such a hatred of monkeys right now. I am so sick of monkeys. Goats are up there too. But monkeys in particular. Not a fan. Oh. And how do I drop bombs again? 
There we go. That's the button. Come on, jump into that. At least everyone seems to... Nope. Goat's here. Or satyr's here. And of course he called over his friends, the Rhino Guards. Someday I will... I, oh good, you're back. Another monkey. Just what I wanted in my life. Someday I might actually get to the mission in this episode. Won't that be neat? Also, my cat has decided that now is the time to make as much noise as possible getting down from the chair. So my female cat has the habit of climbing the back of the chair, which I don't mind. It's a cheap office chair and it's a really good scratcher for her because it's that weird kind of sturdy canvas material. She can't hurt it by scratching on it. So it doesn't bother me. But my male cat, I think, has a touch of arthritis, and so how he likes to get out of the chair is he likes to jump to the couch and then climb down the couch because it's very, very slightly an easier way down than just jumping from the chair. Yeah, he's he has learned some tricks because of his arthritis. And, I mean... It doesn't bother him a whole lot most of the time. He's still pretty active and he still gets around. He just doesn't jump or climb things as much as he used to when he was a kitten. Overall though, he's still pretty mobile and he doesn't seem to hurt too much. So I'm kind of okay with letting it be. Although I really do need to find some time to rent a car and take them for a checkout just because they're both senior kitties. You know, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Now, how is Bentley going to get up here? That's actually a good question. Because Bentley needs to get onto the aquifer, and I've kind of gone the wrong way. I love how these guys have great bomb resistance when they're awake versus when they're asleep. You know what? I'm just going to take this opportunity to run. That's what's going to happen here. And there's nothing like starting a mission at one-third health. If I'm lucky to start it at all, at this point, it's kind of a toss-up. Run, Bentley. Oh, man, it's actually kind of foreshadowing what's going to happen in this mission, too. I think I should have gone this way to begin with. I'm smart. I'm just the best. Look how easy it is to get over here and get to the job. I know my way around this map. Who says I don't? As I expected, Rajan is out for his daily tour of the operation. My sources claim he always carries three blueprints on him, which, when read together, tell you everything about his spice operation. Too bad he doesn't have that section of the clockwork heart we saw during the recon. You could just pump him full of sleep darts and we could all go home. Unfortunately, my sleep darts aren't powerful enough to affect Rajan. What? How are you going to get at those blueprints? Rajan has an insatiable appetite for Indian watermelons, which, if eaten whole, will force even him to nod off for a while. Once he's asleep, I'll creep in and lift the blueprints. That's fine and all, but how do you plan on luring him over to the watermelons? I've equipped my sleep darts with a sonic disruptor. The strange sounds they make should be enough to lead the ever-curious Rajan from place to place. So yeah, this is how you're going to accomplish this mission. You need to use sleep darts to keep him moving. And when he gets close enough, he will scarf down the melon, but he will eventually reset to his normal path if you, let, if you stay too... If you don't shoot in time, essentially. You have to be fairly quick about this, or he will start resetting. And also, he's not the only one who investigates the strange sounds. The guards do, too. This is another one of those missions that is kind of silly. And you better be ready to bail, because he comes awake right then, and he will chase you.
I don't hate this one as much as I hate planting the bug. Oop. It can be pretty bad, especially when all the guards are all over Bentley. And Bentley doesn't have... Oh good, the elephant's here. Bentley doesn't have the skills that Sly does to get away yet. I haven't really purchased many of them. And the guards will continue to chase Bentley forever. Look at this. And a lot of that is because there aren't a lot of places Bentley can go that the guards can't. Kind of waiting this out. I think they're starting to give up and reset. I think. I'm not for sure. Where is... Is he underneath me? Is he bugged out? Is he stuck underneath me? Oh my god, this is dumb. Okay. He's finally pathing back the way he should. Let's see. Now, he's drawn all the way over here. And there is a melon. That's the other problem with this. You can't use your sleep darts because he can hear them forever. Like I said, this isn't as bad as the bug mission, but it's still not great. Okay, I think everything has gone back to normal. I'm afraid to use my sleep darts because I think he's going to hear it, but I need to take care of that guard. That's the best way to get to where I need to go. There's a melon over there. And there's a melon back near the truck. You can just barely see it. Mm. So I think, honestly, the best path I have is not that. Although it was tempting. Uh, I need to get back up on that cliff top. But the only person who can do that is Sly. Now the good news is, is you can use them, the sleep darts, to lure him into a trap. But be careful that you do not get yourself trapped, because that guard came from nowhere. They can hear these darts for a surprising distance. Alright, where is Rajan actually? Over there. Hmm... Oop. Great, I drowned it. Does that mean I'm starting over? Probably. Oh uh, well. No. Okay, good. There is actually a checkpoint for this mission. And it actually kind of put me where I wanted to be. <laughs> Surprisingly enough. Alright, the melon is right over there. I attracted a monkey, not Rajan. Let's see if I can keep from getting that goat. I think I actually kept from getting the goat. At least there is a checkpoint after every blueprint that you lift. Thank goodness. And I believe he will stay asleep until you lift the blueprint from him. So don't worry too much about getting there quickly. Just make sure that you can get there successfully. While he's asleep, I don't think he can hear these darts.
I would really like to put you to sleep. Alright, lift the blueprint. Get the hell out. Did I manage to do this without setting off the alarm? I am amazing. Okay. Now this is the tricky one because this particular melon is all the way over here. Uh, is he actually kind of patrolling the way I want? Maybe this won't be as tricky as I was afraid it was. As long as I don't get spotted by this elephant. Almost get spotted with it anyway. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there, but my OBS just completely froze up and crashed. And I had to actually restart my computer. I've managed to get back to the point where I've got two blueprints. And uh, Rajan is kind of pathing away from me. Let's see, I, he's over there. I need him to be over here near this melon, and I am trying to figure out the best way to accomplish that, to be perfectly honest. Especially without alerting monkey guards. Ooh, actually I could use this tree. I think this tree is my answer. Alright, where is Rajan now? Alright, there he is. I need to very carefully not hit this tree because uh, Rajan will jump up to any platform where he hears the dart impact and his pathfinding to get to the dart is quite good but I think this tree is actually the answer to all of my problems and he gets you a little closer if Rajan discovers you the mission will fail, but you will keep your progress. All right, so now all I need to do is get over there and lift that third blueprint. And I think I did it without alerting any guards. So this should actually be fairly simple. Except for this guy who just showed up here at the worst possible moment. I don't care about you, monkey. I got your blueprints. What? The blueprints? They have been stolen! Pay no attention to the tiny turtle Great behind you. Blueprints. Great field work, Bentley. You're really getting the hang of this. Now fortunately, when... I'll, I'll say after this. I've got some bad news. Rajan has gone into hiding somewhere in the temple. I guess the destruction of his satellite array and my invasion of his personal space to get the blueprint spooked him. To get his portion of the clockwork heart, we'll need to drive him out into the open. Given Rajan's spy-saddled temper, I'd recommend making him angry. First, we'll destroy the center of his operation, the Spice Grinder. Then we'll demolish the dam above the temple in an attempt to flood him out. If that doesn't work, I've made arrangements to exchange one of the temple's facade rubies for some high explosives, which, if necessary, we can use to flood the whole temple grotto. If my psychological profile is accurate, Rajan should pick up the other half of the clockwork heart before making his escape, effectively bringing it to us. Okay, so what I was going to say is fortunately whenever you get bottles it auto saves, so we don't need to go back and get the bottles that I had picked up before. We're still at 20 out of 30. I checked that before I started recording again. Oop, no I didn't want to go back to Thief Net. So let's go pick up five more bottles and I think you probably will see why I said it might have been better to go get them before starting Bentley's mission because we're actually going to start in the same place we really left. We need to go all the way back to that uh, upper platform thing kind of area for lack of a better rambly term. 
Okay. And then we're going to move... Uh, hmm. I guess clockwise around the map? Or no, counterclockwise, actually. Oh. Not high enough. But uh, we'll be picking up basically five more barrels that are all around the elephant statue. Which is... Wow, really? Which is kind of where we left off collecting barrels to begin with. Alright. Now. Monkey, you are in the way. I do not want you to set off the alarm. This may actually... Oh, are you really? Okay. Wait, really? That was weird. This may actually take a couple of tries here. You have to kind of make a leap of faith for this barrel. Or this bottle. Oh, so close. Look at that. And yeah, I did see that vase there that is a treasure. It's not booby-trapped. But I don't really want to do a treasure run right now, so we're going to wait on that. This is pretty much a bottle and mission run today. Assuming I can get to that bottle over there. Ah, oh, so close. The timing for this one is kind of awful. This may actually be one of the harder bottles to get in the game, especially since we don't have the paraglider. Or I could just be doing this really badly. That's also a possibility. But I don't think you can leap up the, the stones to the left of it. I could be wrong. I might want to try that. Ah, especially since I didn't even get off the double jump. Alright, let's try this. Yeah, see... That isn't something that Sly can really grab onto. Wait, am I making this harder than it needs to be? No, can't really get around the wheel either. Hmm, you guys kind of stuck this in a tasty position, didn't you? Hmm, that's good challenge. Oh, good. Speaking of things I enjoy... Guards. That's uh, definitely on the list. Which means this one spawned up here too. Goodbye. I kind of want that guard to leave because he's going to be shining the flashlight right on my landing pad, essentially. Okay. Let's try this again. What if I tried it up here for some reason? No, I feel like that's too far away. Oh, look at that. We can get so close. So close it's criminal. If I had the paraglider, this would not even be an issue. In fact, I know I've done this without the paraglider, but I don't know how many attempts it takes. Why don't I try this a couple more times and then I'll just skip until I get it. That one doesn't really count. A couple of good attempts. You know, once where I actually managed to pull off the double jump maneuver. Oh, of course. And you know, it's even more infuriating that they don't even really have anything to pickpocket. Alright, let's try this. This is kind of dumb. Oh, are you serious? Whatever. I got the bottle. Dodgy collision. I'm going to uh, call dodgy collision on that. Okay. The next few are not going to be nearly as difficult. Or at least I really hope they shouldn't. It immediately fails. Immediately alerts the guard. Sly, 
Would you actually like to land on the platform? Would, ever, would anything like to go right? Because this guard is a coming. He is a coming. You can grab that sly. At least the alarm's off. Like, seriously. Given what we just did, grabbing that ledge should not be a problem. And I'm doing something really stupid. I, I know I am. I'm doing this because I'm, I'm impatient and I'm dumb. And I'm probably going to pay for it with my life. Oh, I see it. I see the circ the sparklies. All right, now I just gotta take care of you. Get you in the corner and well on you for a while, and hope you drop off and you're dead. I got everything I wanted out of that encounter. Okay, let's run back around run into something that has already spawned, but this time I'll just do this and sneak around on this ledge. This is how we'll get to this balcony at least. Maybe that'll give us a better approach on this model over here. Nope. We monkeys. Stop being you. If I could get five seconds just to concentrate on getting this bottle, it would be kind of amazing. So stupid. I don't have this much of a problem with any other map, just this one. And honestly, once I get the bottles and I get the bug mission done, this map turns into a lot of fun. It's just these two things that drive me absolutely insane. They stick the balls, honestly, in some really stupid locations. I've got an idea. Oh good, Smelly Cat 405 is online. I have no idea who that is. Hey, at least you, I can pickpocket you. Someone who is clearly a fan of friends, that's for sure. Otherwise, I have no clue. God, that's done. Okay. The next two? Not nearly as difficult. Not even difficult. In fact, pretty GD easy. Assuming I do not alert any guards along the way. One of them is... Uh, at the front door of the elephant temple, which we can get by using that mushroom that that guard just walked in front of. Oh, and actually, I want to pickpocket you anyway. I really do need to do treasure runs. I might... I want to say, I, I, want to say t I should do them in the next episode, but it might be the episode after that. I just might do a treasure run extravaganza or something. I think only one of them is actually booby-trapped in this level. It might be two, but I'm pretty sure it's only one. Alright. Next bottle is right over here. That's 24. And then the last one... It's actually kind of a cool place, and we've already seen where it might be. 
when we collected bottle 24 or uh, 19 or 18 that was on the vines this one's also on the vine and um, I actually missed this I forgot this was a possibility there we go 25 bottles only five more just five more all right we have two missions we're actually close enough to this one and I kind of want to do it I actually enjoy this mission so we'll just uh, do this one how do I get up there I need to go to that vine Actually, I think I need to go back to the central tower and work my way across. And I feel like there are several missions here and this is actually going to be the fastest because now I've got to, uh, I've got to edit these together. I'm not actually sure what my timer is. Actually, it's not great. I just looked. It's going to be kind of a longer episode despite myself. I was recording for a little bit. So I do have a few minutes to play with. No, get on the vine. Do not pickpocket. We are not pickpocketing today. Oh, get on the vine. I really don't need this from you, Sly. I really don't. Not right now. I do not need the bad collision to come into play. Or bad auto detect or whatever's going on. All right, down this vine. Down this vine. I can hear bottles dinging back and forth. Last thing. Oh, I actually need that health. Good, good, good. Last thing I need is more monkeys. Nufi Bonga has bats. I've got goddamn monkeys. Here we go. I love the fact that you can climb up the trunks. Or the uh, tusks. Oh, no, no. Oh, thank God. Contracted to acquire that huge ruby of Rajad's for a local crime ring. In exchange for the goods, they'll set us up with a Cherry Bomb 500 for the heist. A Cherry Bomb 500? That's a lot of kick. Trust me, we'll need it. To get that ruby free from its moorings, you might have to whack it a few times with your cane. I'm on it. I can do that. This is actually kind of a cool mission because we're thieving for another criminal organization, which I really like. You don't do this a whole lot with Sly. Murray, you're on. Sly's knocked the ruby loose, and now we need your muscle to get it to the buyers. Muscle on the way. Mm hmm. All right. Time for some fun. I love playing as Murray, because he do not fear nothing. Uh, probably the best way to get Murray up there is the same way I would get Bentley up there, though. Which means we gotta go all the way around here. Yeah, up here. That's, that's, that's what I wanted. I did not want to get stuck on the sledge, but otherwise, yeah, they're pretty solid. Oh, by the way, if you set off the elephant alarms, I don't know if I've ever shown that on screen. But uh, uh, if you set off the elephant alarms, monkeys will start climbing out of the tent on top. So that's why elephant alarms are bad, because there is an infinite number of monkeys in there. Oh, there we go. Murray, you can pick up the ruby with your stop move. Despite its size, that rock is really fragile. Bentley will run ahead and inflate cushions that are safe to throw the ruby onto. Use them, or this operation's a bust. Now, head out to our rendezvous near the waterfall. So this is kind of... This is just one of those nights, isn't it? 
This is one of those missions that's actually a lot of fun to play, and the targeting is actually on point for these cushions. You do not have to worry about it too much. I love how this ruby is somehow fragile. Also, th I believe this opens up this area from now on without having to use the mushrooms. I love how this ruby is fragile, but, you know, Sly let it fall 10 feet without caring. But if Murray so much as drops it, it's game over, man. It's game over. I love these cushions, though. <laughs> I love how they're Sly's face. And Bentley just has an infinite number of Sly's face cushions. You cannot fight with the ruby, by the way. If you're going to fight, find a cushion and drop the ruby. This ruby is near flawless. I recommend to my superiors that we purchase it. Take it to our buyer and complete the contract. You know, I don't want to be gender shaman, but for someone who's got such a feminine voice, that is an awfully masculine build. I'm just pointing that out. Yes, women can have masculine builds. I know, women can kick... There are women in the world, many of them, who can kick my ass. I am fully aware. But, in this game in particular, it, it seems a little bit odd. Just that she has such a strange build. Maybe it's just the ropes. Maybe she's wearing uh, special armor. She's wearing like, um, I don't know, assassin armor or something. And then she's got her robes over it. And it makes her look super buff. I think I'm going to make that my headcanon. I have said it is the case, therefore it must be. around here, which I think this mushroom can help with. I don't use the thunder flop as much as I should. Oh, there are just infinite monkeys in the house. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's good. This is just a monkey spawner. That's all this is. I've never seen monkeys come out of that house. And I want to pick up this gem, but I'm... Okay. Alright. Why are we going all the way over here, by the way? This seems like not towards the waterfall. At all. I must say, the Cooper Gang certainly lives up to its reputation. This is a true Indian treasure. We will honor the bargain and provide a cherry bomb 500 at the time the turtle requested. Okay, that's not the direction I thought I was going to finish this, but good enough. And I think I'm going to run back to the safe house and call this an episode, guys. Thanks for coming out and watching today. Sorry about the recording hiccup, but I still appreciate you guys. And if you enjoyed what you saw, let me know by leaving me that thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you want to watch more Sly Cooper, let me know by subscribing because I'm going to upload this every weekday. And if you have any comments, make sure to leave one below. Thanks again for watching and you guys have a great day. Later.